Today on Dr. Phil. Do you treat her like a child? She wants to be treated that way. A controlling husband. Do you tell her when to bathe? Sometimes I do. A humiliated wife. He walks in front of me like he's... ...out on this show. I have had Does strong he... input, yes. So what did you tell her not to talk about here today? This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If it matters to you, that's what I want to talk about. Are we ready in the booth? Let's do it. Thank you very much. All right, sit. <laughs> no, actually, um, actually, stand back up. And second row, you guys sit down. Yeah, you guys sit. Everybody else stand up. But you two sit. You two sit. No, stand back up. Sit. 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 Isn't that annoying? OK, everybody sit, please. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when somebody tries to control you every minute of every hour of every day? No matter what you do, it's not good enough. It's amazing you got as far along as you did in life without somebody coming along to tell you what to do. Well, my guests today know that feeling all too well because they say they live with a controlling spouse that never backs off. In fact, Cindy says her husband, Mike, controls everything she does, from what she eats to when she prays. He says he's not controlling. He just cares a lot. Take a look. Mike would like to control all of my life. I don't think control is a bad thing. Mike thinks he knows what's best for me. Cindy complains to me that I'm controlling every day. He used to pick out my hair color and dye my hair. Mike draws my baths and tells me that I need to take a bath. Mike is adamant that our house stay perfectly clean to the point that he goes around with his finger and checks to see if there's dust. When it comes to me walking, he's very obsessed about pushing that as hard as he can. He walks 40 feet in front of me and I feel like he's walking me like a dog. I absolutely hate it. If you don't have your health, you don't have much. I really encourage Cindy to take care of herself. Mike listens in on my conversations with my family. I think he could even be sneaking around right now listening to this interview. I would love for Cindy to take control of her own life, and I just don't see her doing that. She always needs to be talking to somebody else to get their input, and she's never focusing on what exactly God would want her to do. Mike is in charge of our prayer life. He sets up where we sit to pray, what time we're praying. Living in the situation I'm in right now, I feel I have to have alcohol to cope. Cindy absolutely uses me as an excuse for drinking. I'm overbearing, I'm controlling. I think Mike wants me to drink because the game that we play is that I'm the bad person and he's a good person, he's taking care of me. At what point does love and concern cross over into the behavior of being controlling? Is that a legitimate question, or are you really making a statement there saying, I'm not controlling, I'm just loving and caring? No, I, I am confused about when you love and care for someone, at what point do you move over into a, a controlling behavior? Are you going to be honest today? I'm really going to try to be honest. Are you, are, you, are you afraid of repercussions from him, if you're honest? I, um, I don't want to hurt him, because I'm... Have you tried to control what she's going to talk about on this show? We have definitely talked about it, and I would, I would say that, yes, I have so had strong a, input. Yes. That would be a yes? Absolutely. So you've tried to dictate what she says on this show. Have you given her some taboos? Don't talk about this, don't talk about that? For me, I feel like we mutually agree that there's certain things we would not want to talk about, but, uh, you know, it's up to her. Whatever she needs to talk about, she needs to talk about it. Okay. Did you say certain things in the pre-interview that you then recanted on the tape? Like, in the pre-interview, did you say, if I can't tell you what to do, 
If I don't have that input, then I don't want to have anything to do with you. Can't remember that. Sound like something you'd say? Yes, it does. So you think I just made that up, or you just didn't no, remember? No, no, I, I can't remember saying it specifically, but yeah, I'll go along with that. Well, no, don't do me any favors. I'm just wanting to get the truth out, seriously. You can't control me with passive aggressiveness either. Okay. This ain't my first rodeo. I, you know, I'm, I, I've been through this before. Well, let's just kind of go through the facts. Do you draw her bath for her and tell her when to bathe? Sometimes I do. Do you pick her hair color? I was the first one who ever dyed her hair. That wasn't the question. But I, I, she's asked me my opinion. Do you make her dentist appointments? Not anymore, but I have in the Do past. you tell her when to walk, when to take a walk? Uh, we, yes, we, you know, I don't tell her to go walking. I ask her and strongly urge her, would you like to go to a walk, go for a walk with me? Are you going to tell the truth or are you going to dummy up? I'm going to tell the truth. All right, so what is the truth? He's adamant that I walk and he makes my dentist appointments and he colored my hair for years. Do you break her stuff when she frustrates you? <clears throat> I've broken some of her things. Why would you do that? Anger. I get angry. I get frustrated. I don't know how to vent that feeling with her. A lot of times I feel like Cindy just doesn't hear me. It's I say something, and then she doesn't acknowledge that she's heard me. You tell her when to pray, how to pray? You know, I have to say in the past I have, not anymore. My relationship with God is directed by Mike. He's praying to change me, and I don't know if he's really praying to God. He believes that I am not godly, so it's sin. It's from drinking, overspending money, whatever he feels that I need work on in my life. He uses Bible texts to manipulate and change me. Mike lost his job three years ago. Our home is in foreclosure. Mike believes God is not honoring us as a couple because of the things I do that are against God's nature and sinful. At the beginning, I was really excited about learning more about God, but I have lost my relationship with God. I now don't even really want to pray. This morning, um, I was getting ready for the show, and he told me, are you going to come out and hear what I have to read out of the Bible? And I said, I'm really needing to get ready. And, and he got really, I felt upset that I didn't come out and listen. And he continually is making it, I feel mandatory every day. Huh. W what's up with that? Well, she says you tell her how to pray, you tell her when to pray. Mm -hmm. You say sermons over her. You, 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 you kind of browbeat her with this. Now, I was born and raised a Christian. I raised my boys in a God-centered home. I take it very serious, and I was mm -hmm. taught that Christians are here to serve, mm -hmm. not to dictate and lord over people. You seem mm -hmm. to have read that differently. Maybe we went to different churches. I feel that our home is in crisis, and there's desperation in our marriage, our relationship. I don't know where to turn. I don't know. Um, you reckon you're part of the crisis? Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't be in the situation if, if I wasn't a part of the crisis. So my desperation is, you know, we need to ask God to help us here because all we the years... We or you? Well, I have. I definitely have. But you're going to do it for her, too. No. I mean, I, I always I, felt like I that really was a can't. very personal choice about what you said and did in prayer. I, I never saw that as somebody telling me what to pray for, telling me what to say, telling me when to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I always thought that was between me and, and God. It is. But in here, it's between you and him and God. Right. All right, we got to take a break. Cindy says that she drinks to excess. She says she does it to get back at Mike and to escape his controlling ways. That doesn't make any more sense than what he's doing, but we'll talk about that when we come back. A normal night, I have a bottle of wine. Everyone wants me to leave him. I do not know how because I'm his only friend.
I drink, and Mike isn't happy with it, I drink when I don't even want to drink. I don't want that control over me, so I rebel against it. It's the one thing I'm holding on control over. And he's wanting to take it away, even though it isn't healthy for me. I need to control something. Okay, you know, that's not good, right? I do. I mean, you understand that's not helping the situation at all. I mean, this dynamic may not be working, but pouring alcohol on top of it, if it's rebellion or whatever, that, that doesn't help. No, it doesn't. It's not healthy for me. Um, it's not healthy for relationships with my children or my husband. It seems like it's the only time that I really can have a voice, though. I'm able to have this liquid voice that I can say how I feel. And so I'm able to stand up to Mike and say how I feel. OK, well, let's, let's, let's hear some of that. Dr. Phil, this is a normal night. I come home and have a bottle of wine. Today, he was so terrible to me. And I just accept it. I try to protect him to the point I was going to write you a letter and say, it's not him, it's me. Everyone wants me to leave him. I do not know how because I'm his only friend. I can't do that to him. Is he smothering you with this control? Yes. How does it make you feel when somebody, I'll go down the list of what she, she said. She said that you draw her bath, you color her hair, you make her dentist appointments, you make her take a walk, you demand that she do yoga, that you, you tell her what vitamins to take, that you chastise her if she makes the wrong foods, that you chastise her when she eats bread, that you don't want her on the phone when she is with you. Tell her when to pray, do sermons over, you pick the restaurants, you demean the waiters, and demand the menu be prepared a certain way. You run your finger along the baseboards to check her housekeeping. Make her go to work with you. She doesn't attend AA meetings. You're going to kick her out of the house. You break her stuff. You threaten her. You walk her like a dog on a leash. I mean, I could go on and on and on here. That's your perception, correct? Yeah. I'm not saying that's all right. That's her perception. Mm -hmm. now, you seem to have an excuse or an explanation for each one of it that you're just doing it for care, but reality is perception, and she perceives that that's what you're doing to her. Mm -hmm. How accurate is she? I, I would say she's very accurate. OK. And you want to know if that's crossing the boundary, crossing the line? Oh, I know I've crossed the boundary. It's hugely crossing the line. Absolutely. You said you woke up one time, and he's standing over you with a pillow over your head? What, what was that? And that was the only time he's ever been physically abusive, and that was because he was angry that I had a Thanksgiving event at his mother's house, and I'd gone um, with his brothers to listen to jazz um, Thanksgiving evening, and he was angry that I didn't come in with his brothers till what late. When he woke up and he was there with a pillow. He had a pillow over my head to wake me up at 6 in the morning to tell me he was leaving me in Palm Springs. And he, what do you mean a pillow over your <clears> head? He had a pillow over my head. To smother you? Yeah, kind of, mm-hmm. Well, you don't kind of sort of smother somebody. Was he smothering you? He was you? trying to get my attention, yeah. Startle you awake? Yeah. He wasn't trying to kill you? No. OK, I want to be clear on that. No. You left without her? Yeah. I did. Because she went out with your brothers? No, because um, she stayed drunk the whole time we were at my mother and father's <laughs> house. And uh, she embarrassed me. She overtalked everyone. What happens is. I get frustrated, and then I get angry, and I left. You said, if I can't take care of you, I probably don't want to have anything to do with you. Mm. And then you said, I get this idea that our life would be better if Cindy behaved in a certain way. Well, when you go home to someone that's drunk every night, and... I'm not drunk every night, Dr. Phil. Well, you're drunk too much. I know, but not every night. I go visit my family and my children. I don't drink. I, I just got back from a week with them. I don't drink when I'm there. When I'm with him, I feel like drinking. You said when you were in rehab away from him, you were at your happiest. I was. Because you were away from him. Mm -hmm. Yes. I had, yeah, I made good, healthy decisions for myself. And I went to yoga every day, and I swam every day, and I prayed every day, and I, I enjoyed that. He says you like to play the victim and manipulate people. 
Sometimes I think I do. I think I feel I'm a victim. You drink to get back at him? I drink at him. Mm -hmm. I do. All of this started about three years ago when my, I lost my father and he lost his job. Mm -hmm. The control began, started to become stronger. I started drinking more. He started getting upset about it. I started holding on to it. I started eating more. I've gained weight. And I started spending money that we didn't have. This is not so, your first marriage? No. No. Um, it's my um, third marriage. So do you have a theory as to why you might be blurring, <clears throat> blurring these boundaries? Because she's abusing alcohol. She's hurting herself. She, she continues to hurt herself. She hurts her relationships with her mother, her children. Everywhere she's, she's... Are you controlling and penurious of wait staff because she drinks? Wait staff? Yeah, she says when you are in a restaurant with waiters that it gets so bad she doesn't even want to go. She says it's just not worth it. Right. He just demeans them, he controls them, he condescends to them. That's her perception. That's her perception. I've gotten to a point where I think this word controlling, I, I'm gun shy. I'm just like, oh my God. I'm controlling. This morning, I'll give you a perfect example. The driver asked us, it's time to go. Said it to me, picking us up at the hotel. I turned to Cindy. I said, Cindy, it's time to go. She said, see, you're controlling. No, I'm going to change. I would like to say something. And I would like to. So I'm controlling I, because I'm. In the last 72 hours, this is, this is what I want to say. We go to the show while we've been here. I go in and pick out a seat in the theater. He gets popcorn, and I know immediately when he walks in the theater and finds me, he will make us move to another seat. Without a doubt, I know that we will be moving to another seat because it doesn't matter what seat I choose in that theater, it's, it's not the right one. I know this. You, know, you can't tell me you I don't have this. insight into this. It's, that you don't get that true. this is not okay. It's a big theater. There's but six I'm people in the theater, never, and they come right. and sit right down behind us. But it's ne I knew this. But it I happens didn't, every time, I felt right? like just It happens dance. in every restaurant, every theater. Every you time. can't tell me you don't have insight to this. I'm going to give you my theory. Okay. And up next, there's something Mike doesn't want Cindy to talk about with me. Is he trying to control this show? I ask him up front. We'll see what they say when we come back. I've had to barricade myself in my garage before. I locked the doors. She went out with the keys and unlocked the door. And I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, leave me alone, leave me alone. I took an old power cord and I tied the door shut. All right, I'm back with Cindy and Mike, and we're talking about control. I said I had a theory about this. You said this really ramped up and got worse. them. It's when they feel like they're spinning out of control inside. Mm -hmm. And so they think, okay, if I can control this, if I can make everything exactly right, if my external world is very orderly and everything is under control and I'm dictating what happens, then I have just a moment of sanity. It's like my anxiety diminishes just a little bit. And so I kind of get a fix. If I can control you, I'm not focusing on me. I'm focusing on you which means we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. And you give him lots to talk about, don't you? I do. Because you drink and you rebel against him and, and you go badmouth him to your family and then they all dog on him. Right. So y'all just have a donkey barbecue and he furnishes the ass, right? I mean, exactly. you, you guys just get all exactly. over it and you throw him under the bus. And so <laughs> uh, that's all good. So now, now you don't like that. So we're, we're starting to push back. Does it occur to you that you might be really clinging on to the concrete things you can see and control because you feel out of control in your life? You feel out of control internally? I do feel out of control. I lost my job. And all of a sudden, there has to be adjustments. And I make adjustments. Cindy's not making adjustments. She continues to spend like I'm still making the same amount of money. Listen, I don't doubt that you have legitimate complaints, but your reaction to them <clears throat> is illegitimate. It's not working. If you want to stay married, Mike, come on. I, listen, I, you can kill the messenger if you want, but if you want to stay married, this has got to change, or she's going to get out of this. 
I've right, been doing right. this a long time. Right. I can see them coming a mile away. Mm -hmm. So what did you tell her not to talk about here today? Um, about a year ago, I had an affair. It, someone, um, and I told her a year ago. After 12 years, I told her that. So you didn't have it a year ago. You had it 12 years ago. That's correct. And you told her a year ago. That's right. You just thought, it's been 12 years. It's time to tell her this? No. Why did you do it? Guilt's a bitch. It was the only, the only way that I felt something could change. What did you want to say? He told me because it was the only way that he could have a clear slate with God and, and he would be able to have a sanctified life. It really destroyed me. Not that he had an affair, that he told me. I did not want to know about it. I didn't think after 12 years he should have told me. I blew it. I made a mess. And I wanted her to know because how can I be married to someone and they don't know the truth? I have no secrets with Cindy. There are no more secrets between us. Is this marriage going to work if he continues to do this? He has to accept me and not try to change me. He has to back off and let me breathe, let me see what it is I want for myself. Let, let, let me guess. You've never been on your own. No, I haven't. I bet you got married young. I did. How young? I was 18. So you went from daddy's house to husband's house? I did. And then husband's house to husband's house? I did. Husband's house to husband's house? I did. Do you feel like you need to have a, a man in your life? I do. But you understand, you two can play into each other's bad points here. You, you can have this need to be affiliated, and you can have this need to control your environment, mm -hmm. and you just play into each other's bad points. And yes. you know, Dr. Phil, I mean, a controller knows a controller. I, I feel like Cindy can be controlling in my life as well. No, trust me, you're aggressive and she's passive aggressive. I totally get it. She sabotages you like you wouldn't believe. Yes. And I make no question about it. But I'm going to tell you this. If you don't change this dynamic, you're going to be divorced and you're going to be going on to your fourth husband. She'll replace you before dark because she doesn't know Thanks, any other Dr. way to live. Phil. No, I know. No, you will. No, I know. I mean, you'll run another one in here. You'll I run know. in number four because you don't know how to live otherwise. Do you get that you treat her like a child? Because she wants to be treated that I, way. I, I, I said you play in each other's bad spots, yeah. but that doesn't mean you're not sabotaging yourself when you do that. Can opinion. I ask you a question? Yes. A, a scenario. Can I bring up a scenario? She puts the knives in. And we've talked about this a lot with your staff. She puts the knives in the dishwasher. And when she takes the knives out of the di they're they're pointing up. They're right. pointed end up. And when she put, takes them out, puts them away, more times than not, I've seen cuts on her hands, Band-Aids, blood all over the kitchen. I've simply asked her, would it not be a better idea to put the pointed side down so you don't cut yourself anymore? You know, Is that, that controlling? No, that isn't how I cut myself. That, I've never cut myself on the knives in the dishwasher once in my entire life. I cut myself because I'm left-handed and I don't have left-handed knives and I cut myself by well, cutting. That's it. That's, so yeah. you don't even know how I'm cutting myself in the kitchen. Let me ask you something. Is this really a battle you want to pick? No. no. I don't want to fight with oh. her. I mean, I you really Cindy. want to fight about which oh. end of the knives are up in the dishwasher? <sighs> if you're fighting about that, you got way too much time. You guys are making this a battlefield. You've got a free-floating anxiety. And you are dealing with it by trying to control her and your external world. If you will deal with the anxiety instead of displacing it on her and others, this will be over in a short period of time, like that. Your problems will be over. You can be happy. You can get, you can get a grip on your drinking and stop acting like a rebellious teenager. If you will mm -hmm. just do that, and I can help you to do that. I can okay. help you to do it, but that's what, this is all driven by anxiety okay. and a lack of insight as to how you are impacting other people. But if you don't do that, you're going to destroy this marriage. And you're going to drink yourself into oblivion, and then you're going to be a real catch. Let's fix this here. I will get you help with this anxiety. All right, look, marriage is supposed to be about compromise. It's supposed to be about negotiation. I want to know how you at home do that in your relationships. We've got a conversation going on right now on DrPhil.com, people watching this show and also on my Facebook page. So log on 
and share your stories. I want to hear it. Now, we're going to add another couple to this conversation. We're going to flip it around. We have a controlling wife who says she has to follow her husband around to make sure things get done right. Now, I'm not done with Cindy and Mike. I want them to pay attention. Sometimes you can see things in others that you don't see in yourself. And then we're going to talk some more with this nice couple. We'll be right back. Jenny wants me to do everything her way, and, and my way is wrong. You turn down the water just a little bit? Oh, my god. I feel like a failure. I'm fixing the bacon for you. Why? I want to. No, I got it. My wife is controlling and overbearing. Everything I do, she wants to control. Every, everything. I mean, it could be something so small as the amount of marshmallows I put in hot chocolate. I want crap done when I ask for it to be done. When things are going on in the house that I don't have control of, I feel like I'm going to explode. What? Time to turn the burner on. The burner's on seven, Jenny. OK. OK. I could be doing the dishes. It's everything from the amount of pressure I'm using with the water. Babe, will you turn down the water just a little bit? Oh, my god. I'm just rinsing them. She'll want to control how I'm cooking, what I'm cooking. I'm fixing the bacon for you. Why? I want to. No, I got it. I mean, I want control over everything. Jenny wants me to do everything her way, and, and my way is wrong. The way I like to fold a bath towel, fold it in half, and fold it in half again. I fold it differently, like this and like that. And it's a done deal. I call them names. Jenny's called me a bitch, a little bitch. Shit. It makes me feel horrible. When I get angry with Daniel, I've called him loser. You know, it flies out of my mouth. I feel like Jenny hates me all the time. I will follow him to the car, to the porch, to the garage. I'm like a stalker. She'll say something, and it'll be really hurtful. And I'll hop in my car and leave. She'll rip my windshield blade up and bend it. I'm like in attack mode, and I'll just keep at him. I mean, it's killing me. I don't feel like a man. I feel like a failure. I have to have so much control that he can't go be a man on his own. If it doesn't change, I got to go. How long have you been married? Uh, six, six years on Friday. Six years on Friday. Mm -hmm. I bet that feels like dog years. <laughs> kind That's got to be a long six years if this has been going on. Yeah. Why are you putting up with this? Marriage doesn't come easy. You know, I, I came from a broken home and then went to a broken home, and it's always one person pointing a finger at the other, or two people pointing fingers at each other instead of one person pointing a finger at themselves. But this is killing you. Yeah. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel horrible. Well, let me ask you something. How much fun are you to live with? Um, probably none. I don't like living with myself some days. And when, when you put your hand on the doorknob to come in the house, what's going through your head? What are you expecting? I know Jenny's going to be there asking me to do something. Or if I do something, it's going to be corrected in front of my children. You know, nothing's right. Nothing's efficient enough. So you, you heard me talking to this couple down here. Mm -hmm. Did you see yourself in uh, Mike? Uh-huh. So what did you learn from that conversation? Um, that I need to stop. It's, it's not OK. I'm, I mean, I, know, I, I don't know how Daniel feels when I do it to him, but I know how I feel we're how I feel after, and I feel horrible that I do it to him, that I do it to the, I don't do it to the kids per se, but they're in the house, so they're seeing it be done. Well, I asked Mike what his theory was of why he did it, and he didn't have much of an answer. Uh, what's your theory? Um, I think I do it because when I was growing up, I had no control over the things that went on in my house, and I guess I'm kind of out of control myself, and I don't know how to fix it. So you're out of control on being in control? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know how to to accept things as they are. I don't know how to accept when he does something to just let it be. I should be grateful that, you know, he made dinner or he did the laundry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure Robin would be. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, but no, sir, you help out, right? I mean, yeah. You know, I help out a lot. You know, I have my moments. I mean, but that's in our pedigree as men to want to sit on the couch and watch a game once in a while. In your own home? In my own home. On your own couch? On my own couch, on my own TV. Your own team? Yeah. On your own TV? Yes, sir. But that's not, that's not in the cards. Because you got to have him doing something, right? So you can see, look, I can make him do things. Um, I don't know if I want to make him do things, but I feel like I'm such a multitasker that I feel like he should join in. But he's so laid back that I think I 
I'm jealous that he's so laid back. But you know better. You know better how this should be folded, how this should be washed, how this should be done. You know better. Sometimes, yes. But if you're so smart, how come your marriage is a train wreck? I'm because I'm not smart, I guess. But no, you've decided that you know best. We're going to do things my way. You're going to get up and do it when I want you to do it, the way I want you to do it. Because you're smart. You're going to run things. And if you're so smart, how come you've run this off in the ditch? I don't know. I, I told Mike here, I, I said, this is an anxiety issue. And, you know, I think you should deal with psychological issues psychologically, not psychological issues environmentally or relationally. But it is anxiety, and it, anxiety lessens when you exercise control over something, right? Yeah. But if it really worked, you wouldn't have to do it over and over and over again, would you? Nope. You're right. Well, up next, Daniel says he is so turned off by her controlling behavior that he no longer wants to have sex with her. Surprise, surprise. We'll be right back. I've had to barricade myself in my garage before. I wasn't cooking how she wanted to, and she rudely stepped in and wanted to finish it for me, and I got upset. So I went out to the garage. I locked the doors. She went out with the keys and unlocked the door. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, leave me alone, leave me alone. I took an old power cord, and I tied the door shut. I just don't have the passion to give out. I mean, why would I? You treat me like I'm supposed to love you for that. It puts a major strain on our relationship sexually, the way that she acts towards me, because I don't, I don't want to be around her. Well, that's Daniel talking about how his wife's demeaning behavior has really ruined his sex drive. Um, I mean, you'd probably do it wrong, right? <laughs> no. I don't think I have a problem in that part. It's just. <laughs> Well, you criticize everything else. You don't criticize that? No, actually, I don't. I'm quite pleased with that. Well, there you go. <laughs> it seemed like you ought to do that all the time, then. Because <laughs> er everything else you do, everything else you do, from folding laundry to cooking to how much salt you got in the pot to washing dishes, you understand that washing dishes is a pretty basic job. Anybody can wash mm -hmm. dishes, mm -hmm. but you got to coach the way he washes dishes. It's not the actual washing, it's the water pressure. I always turn it down, because I figure it's too much. We get a big water bill, and then he complains about the water bill. Okay, do you know how ridiculous that sounds? Mm -hmm. I mean, as you were saying yes, that, that I, I mean, I just wondered if your brain knew what your mouth was saying. Uh -huh, but I had to say it, because I want to tell you everything. I don't want to hold back. So yeah, it sounded really stupid that I go behind him and turn the water pressure down, but I do. Mike, what do you think about what she's saying? I, I would go along with Jenny. That seems normal to me. Boy, we ought to just put you two in the room. <laughs> <laughs> We'd probably get along really good. <laughs> Insight's not your long suit on this, is it? <laughs> no, not really. But d do you get how he feels? Yeah. D yeah. Can you see the parallel between how he feels and how Cindy feels? I, I really could relate to Jenny when she said how bad she feels after the fact. I mean, I feel horrible. And I see what it's done to you. And I see the pain in your eyes. And I see it in Cindy's eyes. and. It devastates me. I, I don't want to continue to be a, a destructive human being. I want to be a nurturing husband. Yeah, I think a good rule to embrace is that you deal with people, whoever, waiter, spouse, brother, sister, friend, you deal with them in a way that protects or enhances their self-esteem. Because I'll promise you, if you engage people in a way that whenever you finish that interaction with them, they feel better about themselves than they did before they encountered you, you're going to be a success. What do you think about that? I think that's, that's right on. You think that's a pretty good theory, a yes. pretty good philosophy? Yeah, that definitely. if you dealt with your husband where when you got through interacting with him, he walked out that door saying, you know what? That woman is proud of me. She's proud of who I am. She's proud of what I do. She's proud of what I stand for, and she believes in me. I would like How would that, that feel? I feel really good about myself. And I, I would be um, really excited to hurry up and get home as soon as I could. But you would rather do this semi-fix to your anxiety 
than know that you sent your husband out into the world feeling good about who he is. I don't know if I would rather. I would like to learn how to not do it. Uh huh. Well, life's about, about choices. It's hard to imagine how he feels, isn't it? Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. I said these two should, should be together. Well, that's just what we're going to do. I'm going to put these controlling guests to the test. You know, sometimes you walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, the light bulb comes on over your head. Well, we're just going to walk in those shoes when we come back. <laughs> Mike and Jenny's marriages are in danger, in my opinion, because of their controlling ways. Now, who do you think is more controlling, Mike or Jenny? we got a poll going right now on drphil.com. You can log on and cast your vote, because I want them to see it. I want them to see it. Now, before the break, I said I was going to put Mike and Jenny to the test. You know, I, we've all heard the old adage that if you want to really know how somebody feels, walk a mile in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And you get told what to do all the time, and what you do gets criticized all the time. You get told what to do all the time. You get managed like a child, and you get criticized for not doing it right. So we're going to give you guys an opportunity to be coached. OK. OK? So let me have it out here. This is very simple. Very simple experiment. OK. These are the instructions. you've got your partners here that are going to instruct you on how to do this. And by the way, if you get this done, and we've timed it, it can be done. If you get this done between now and the end of the show, I'm going to give you both $1,000. Oh, my okay? God. <laughs> give them good. Give them good. <laughs> okay? Okay. Uh, Timmy? I don't even know what a bookshelf looks like. Oh. Where? From where? You're going to stand right here, and oh, since we don't have a lot of time, I'm going to help you intensify this a little bit and coach him, OK? Uh, All right, are you ready? I don't even know what a bookshelf so looks one. like. Yes, that's all one bookshelf. That's all the information you're going to get from me. All right, there's a 1000 bucks on the line here. The clock is ticking. Go. Okay. Mike, it is two-sided, and it has a bottom okay, yeah. shelf, and it so has a drawer. All the wooden pegs. It Grab all of the wooden pegs. Right here, and and no, you can't oh, show that to us. You just have to coach him. This right is here, a team. This beige thing this is at the team. bottom. You better pay attention. Oh, OK. Tell him he's not okay. paying attention to Mike, his partner. Mike, OK, what's this thing right there, that thing? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, I don't want this on TV. You I'm gotta not tell him to hurry up. Okay, Mike, go tell him to hurry that. up. Hurry up, hurry, Mike. Clock is ticking. The, uh, there's slides. These are slide parts. These slides. You guys better work together. This is one bookshelf. Oh, this is the top part. This is all the same. This is all yes. one bookshelf. Oh, you mean we're working with them too? Yes. Oh my gosh, you're working over there with Daniel. And okay. Okay. This is, this is the front of the drawer. I'm not hearing okay. you, Daniel. Now, here, okay, let me help you out. Here, All right, come on, you this. guys. You need to get together. Come on, get to moving. You're standing there holding that here. like you don't know what to do with it. What are you, here. an idiot? Come on. Come on. You're not working together. Come on, get on top of this. Come on, you got all the answers. Come on, buddy. How many times we got to tell you how to do this? The clock is ticking. You've got time. you got to move here. Come what on, you're that? not working with your partner. Daniel, Come on, you two are working together. That's Come on, top. move it, move it, move it, move it. That's wrong. You're putting it in the wrong side. What is wrong with you? Uh, no, that not that way. Do it this way. Which way? <laughs> no. yeah. You can't touch it. I'm you can't to touch it. it. Okay, okay. okay I love got, it. I love these. it. I no. Okay, y'all keep working. We're going to take a break. Oh, keep going. Okay, Mike, it. it's got two black sides. Well, I've got these two controllers working on this project, and they've got the controllees telling them how to do it. So I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're so uh, quick themselves. Uh, the buzzer just went off. God, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like that. So you don't like telling them what to do? Mm 
Yeah, well, okay. Uh, step away from the table. Step away from the table. Like so y'all didn't work as a very good team. Mm -mm. You didn't work as a very good team. You're supposed to be smart. I know. <laughs> Maybe you'll rethink this in the future. Absolutely. I tell you what, let's give them the thousand bucks anyway. <laughs> thank all of my guests for being here today. If you have a controlling spouse and you want help with your relationship, log on to drphil.com and share your story. Thanks so long. <laughs> See y'all.